For joining us today, we're going to do interactive small group. We'll try to not keep everybody from the end of the day too long. Um, what we're going to be presenting this uh, session, uh, myself, John Zanos, I'm with Canonical. I manage the OEM, ow, OEM and Alliance and Strategic Business within Canonical. Mark Baker, who's in a pensive paw pose, um, is our product manager for everything we do with OpenStack. Uh, we're going to take some time and talk about making OpenStack easy and simplifying the deployment of SDNs. You know, our, I'll speak for myself, for those of you that don't know me, I, I also am a member of the OpenStack board. I personally have been uh, consistently over the position that while Neutron has some deficiencies, it is an excellent API gateway and I think the SDN community has done a nice job of plugging into it and bringing all the features you need to manage the network. So what we're going to talk about is how we make the deployment of OpenStack and an associated SDN easier and ultimately make it easier to run OpenStack and run the network. We'll be uh, at the end of the session joined by Plum Grid Pear. Pear, please stand up. There's not that many people. Um, so we're also going to then go specifically into the Plum Grid SDN and what we're doing together with Plum Grid. Um, let's see, how do I go next? Do you know? That was the one bit we didn't rehearse. <laughs> there, there we go. go. So It's on the wheel on the side. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, so. One of the things we think is going on is that, as we all know, software, as Mark Anderson talked about in a Wall Street Journal article, is really eating the world. And what we mean by that is companies like Uber are fundamentally changing how the tax taxi industry is working without owning any taxis. Airbnb is changing how the hotel industry is run, is run without owning any hotels. How are they doing that and disrupting these industries? They're doing it through software making life easier. Behind that is a scale out operation that's all based on software automation. Yeah. At the same time, the technology behind it is getting more and more complex. It's getting more and more complex because you have this world of a hybrid cloud. You have on-premise clouds like OpenStack connecting with public clouds like Amazon, Google, and Azure. And this becomes multiple regions, multiple data sets, complex net networks, and ultimately decisions made about data where the data may reside on premise, the compute may be on a public cloud scale, in the spiky nature of somebody's business may be bouncing between you know, the public cloud and back on, on premise. And this is a very complex world. The scale that Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are able to operate is really based on their ability to grossly simplify and automate. And that's what allows them to do basically amazing things in terms of running big data centers with very few people. So one of the things we truly believe is that to be successful in this space, you cannot solve these problems by people. No more feet, no more hands. You've got to figure out on how you're going to simplify the architecture you're deploying in this complex hybrid cloud where software is so critically important to the business you're running and figure out how to automate it. And it's the automation that ultimately is the most critical part, because if you're unable to automate it, you won't be able to scale. If you won't be able to scale, you won't be able to be disruptive. And you know, my simple premise here is if you're unable to do these things, ultimately companies will perish, just like the taxi industry is fundamentally going a change that will take many, many companies that have run for hundreds of years, or not quite hundreds, but tens of years, and knock them out of business, replaced by Uber, which is a very elegant model. 
So what we're going to do is demonstrate a couple things that, that Mark's going to do. Um, one, we're going to demonstrate how we actually simplify the deployment of OpenStack with our tool called Autopilot. Oh, what did I do? That's me. Ah, thank you. That's me. See, Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, John. So as a, uh, let me just get rid of this. Yeah, exactly. There's things we should shut down before we demo. So um, thank you. As John said, my name is Mark Baker. I'm, I'm part of the product team at Canonical, uh, working on OpenStack. And um, uh, for those of you, some of you may have seen Mark uh, Shuttleworth's session this morning, and he was talking about um, the Ubuntu OpenStack Autopilot, or Canonical's OpenStack Autopilot. The Autopilot is really a, a big step forward in this simplification. Right? Who's a, anyone here a cloud architect? No one a cloud architect. That absolutely proves the point, right? <laughs> OpenStack cloud architects, even at the OpenStack Summit, are very rare people. So, and, <laughs> and um, if, if, even if you can find one, um, being able to hire them or able to afford to hire those, those OpenStack cloud architects is very difficult for most organizations. And so a big step in this simplification and automation is the Ubuntu OpenStack, uh, OpenStack Autopilot. We've, um, we've worked with, this, this tool has taken us two years, two and a half years to build. Um, and that is not because we're slow at programming, right? We have some good Python developers. But it's because a lot of the knowledge that, that feeds into this tool has come from real live deployments that we have done on site in conjunction with customers, in conjunction with partners like PlumGrid, um, where we encapsulate, we learn from making mistakes, and we learn what optimal architectures and best practice looks like. And, and we've built a lot of that knowledge, that know-how, into this tool. So um, I'll just go ahead and kick this off. This is really a simple three-stage process, a setup, configure, install, and then manage. In order to be able to get going on our cloud, though, we, we need to start with that configure piece. So I'll, I'm going to click on configure. Um, <clears throat> I've already done, in preparation, a couple of things here to get going. Um, just obviously installed the autopilot itself uh, and connected that with um, physical hardware. This is running on real live physical hardware. Um, it's actually running on a data center in Boston. I say that because um, there may be a little lag sometimes with my clicking and, and, and things happening. But I'm going to go ahead and, and create a cloud. Um, this is going to be a real uh, kilo based OpenStack cloud. Um, I'm going to call it, um, uh, let's call it Tokyo, right? So uh, we'll call it. Uh, region 1 cloud in Tokyo, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose some options. Now, this is a fairly limited number of options today. Uh, we'll see KVM as a hypervisor. Right, most majority of OpenStack clouds using KVM as a hypervisor today. Very soon, though, in this autopilot, you will see other options. Uh, uh, probably the first will be LexD, our container hypervisor for running LXC containers. Uh, we're going to choose um, Open vSwitch for our networking. Relatively simple and straightforward today. But we'll come on and show you how uh, we can <coughs> uh, add some other options in. Let's go ahead and do that. Yep. Uh, put that on a network. Uh, and we'll choose some storage. So um, any preferences storage-wise? Ceph. Ceph. Go on. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves Ceph. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and choose Ceph for um, block storage, too. Yeah, why not? So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and, uh, and then we need to add some, uh, some hardware to it, right? So we have um, uh, this, the hardware that's, that's being exposed or surfed, surfaced into um, the autopilot here is actually coming from a tool that sits underneath this called MAS. All of this complexity is hidden from you. I'm just, just sort of giving you the, the insight. So MAS is a metal as a service, a bare metal provisioning tool. And um, that is surfaced into the autopilot, so you know what hardware that you, you, you have available. Um, I'm just going to choose all of these in my, uh, in my region. So uh, uh, there we go. And um, Mark, it, just before you sure. kick off, if you roll back up a little bit. To, uh, as we go through the rest of the talk, we're going to point uh, to how we deploy other SDNs with Juju, which is the tool behind here, Absolutely. which Mark will do. But this spot right here where Open vSwitch is, as you see us roll this tool out over the next year with different iterations, what will be added 
will be different SDNs that mm -hmm. will become choices. So like with Plum Grid, after they go through our, our review and, our, and uh, certification process, that will become an option if we decide to do so together, as will other partners that we're working with in the SDN space. And those become other choices that become much easier to deploy in, in, in terms of deploying them as part of an OpenStack cloud with this kind of click and go approach. Absolutely, and that's a, 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 a great point. So whilst you're doing that, I noticed that I hadn't got a highly available cloud. Um, nobody likes a, highly, uh, a, a, a cloud that is not highly available, so um, uh, I'm gonna add uh, some more hardware to that. You'll now see that it's highly available. I have enough machines in order to be able to spread our core OpenStack services across enough physical machines uh, and, and uh, across two zones to create a high, highly available service. I'll go ahead and click uh, uh, install there. It'll take us into the nice gray bar land. It'll tell us, oh, Ten. oh, let me go and take one of those off. Yeah, exactly. So, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Edit it right there. We Just go. one note. Which one? That one. There we go. See, all the greatest um, rehearsing. Save, Save the selection and off we go. There we go. Thank you. So, um, thank you, Scott. There's a man behind the curtain who's not actually behind the curtain. Uh, the hel helping out there. So, as John said, the, the magic that's underneath this The, the, magic behind, the, the, magic be, the magic behind this is something called Juju. So Juju is a modeling tool that allows us to be able to model complex application architectures and do so um, uh, in a simple way, but choose then to deploy them to multiple different, as we could say, substrates. Now, in this instance, it's deploying it to a substrate, but this is bare metal. So it's deploying physical services onto bare metal. And it's deploying those OpenStack services using the choices that we have made. Um, in order to be able to, but we can also model other complex applications and deploy those too. To give you an idea about Juju and how we can incorporate different SDNs into this environment, this is a, an example of uh, uh, OpenStack uh, deployed in conjunction with Open vSwitch, so, uh, which we've just done. Um, is this the ODL model? ODL OVS, thank you very much. So this is uh, in, done in conjunction with Open Daylight. The services that you're looking at, we take a very simple example. We're going to look at uh, RabbitMQ. You'll see that this, uh, we have one running uh, instance of RabbitMQ. Uh, we're going to take a look at the charm, the thing that sits behind it. This is the configuration of that, the config settings that we have. And if we wanted to go and see uh, the particular uh, implementation of that. So these are services that, as we refer to in the digital world, as being charmed. And the charm services, this logical view that we're looking at, are connected using something called relations. Yeah, and one thing to understand is that each charm is fundamentally the encapsulation of the essence of an application. So when you look at the SDN pieces here, in essence, what, in the case of ODL, we did, in the case of Plum Grid, Plum Grid did, we capture the essence of the application, and then what Juju worries about is the connections to the other applications. So as you can see, and you will see, that the SDN charms map into Neutron, right, and the other connections that they need to kind of correctly map into OpenStack. Absolutely, John, thank you. So the, the great thing, though, is that we have a set of what we call a base bundle. Charms we can be, uh, are connecting, we can save those as a bundle. We have a base bundle for OpenStack, but then we also have bundles of OpenStack in conjunction with PlumGrid, for example, as an SDN, and other old SDNs too. So if you as a, an end user want to be able to choose deploy OpenStack, you can do that in a base configuration, and then either add in an SDN, PlumGrid in, uh, uh, as a great example here, and this is a, a, uh, an example of exactly that, an OpenStack bundle deployed in conjunction with PlumGrid. PlumGrid uh, is a partner that we've worked with to charm their application, their SDN technologies, and to be able to easily connect it and this, to an OpenStack cloud. And this bundle represents the work that Plumgrid did in configurating the 
OpenStack bundle with the SDN charm, that is PlumGrid. And why don't we just do a quick check on how are we doing with deploying the cloud that we've been working on? It's, it's running pretty slow there okay. at the moment, 5%. So a few a few minutes is a long time when you're on stage. I know, but, it, but it's uh, so not when you're deploying a cloud. What we're going to do is check in periodically because when uh, in the Netherlands I did this, did this demonstration, it took about 40 minutes to an hour, and we won't have enough time. And nobody wants to stay here that long mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But what we'll do is do a couple checks checks to show you that we're actually progressing in deploying an OpenStack cloud. That's reasonably complex with a fair number of nodes in the course of 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, something that without the benefit of mapping the bundle, already doing the work in terms of this example with PlumGrid, you know, in terms of mapping PlumGrid to OpenStack and the elements of OpenStacks being mapped together, you know, would be quite a bit longer. I think we're at a good point, Pear, if you want to come join us and we can talk a little bit more about uh, oh, let's just stay on the. Um, oh, sorry, let's stay on that one. Um, both um, the bundle and the work that PlumGrid did, but maybe as a starting point, you can explain a little bit of what you liked about Juju, mm -hmm. the problem that you're solving that you've encountered in the the marketplace, and maybe also talk a little bit about how you think the PlumGrid SDN, you know, what's its strengths and what customers like about it. Yes. I'm going to start by explaining a little bit the complexities of installing a networking solution OpenStack. Usually what it happens is that uh, you have to have OpenStack environment in order to connect a networking solution to Neutron, but at the same time, networking is kind of the fundamental element that connects all the pieces together. So in most of the deployments, what happens is that you have to go through an interactive process where first you bring some servers, then you bring the OpenStack controllers, you install the network, you configure everything, and you have kind of multiple dependencies and going through the cycle to have everything up and running. What we saw when we started working in Juju is that somehow expressing these complex relations within the Juju charm and creating a bundle that encompasses the whole thing, it creates basically the simplicity that hides all the human steps within the process and it basically prevents errors. That was the most powerful thing because when we live in this world that basically you have to install test, create continuous integration environments, have your uh, development environment, replicate exactly the same environment for your production environment or your testing environment. Basically, the Juju bundles with all the relations between the OpenStack and PlumGrid, that was what simplified the whole process uh, internally and with our customers. So that was very powerful. Sure. Then, go. Pear, one of the things that I, I wanted you to talk to a little bit, because I think not only did you invest a lot of time in building those relationships and creating the bundle itself, but the bundle then becomes available through our Juju store to anybody to reuse, simplifying the hard work you've done, yes. putting it in the hands of many others. Yes. If you think uh, the other thing that in the OpenStack community is kind of difficult is where do you fetch uh, the packages, the information, and the, and the software that you want to run. So we, we work with Canonical to put uh, this in the, in the Juju Charms marketplace. And uh, without even us realizing, like uh, last week, somebody wrote a blog about how much uh, SDN was being used in the wild. And it was surprising to us to see that there were 98 deployments of PlumGrid with Juju Charms, and we didn't have to do anything. We didn't even know that people were kind of deploying it, installing it, and trying it, uh, just by the fact that it got published in this marketplace that everybody has access to. That was a pretty good surprise. Yeah, and one of the hidden benefits, I think, of this is what we've heard from the marketplace is that it's very difficult to deploy OpenStack. And then adding an SDN made it even harder. So if they're doing an evaluation of one SDN compared to the other, they really would just invest the time to deploy one version of, in essence, one OpenStack cloud with one SDN. And by the time they actually had that up and running, that was good enough. And that was the one they ended up using. What we were trying to do in terms of enabling Juju, Charms, and Autopilot to simplify the deployment of OpenStack and then simplify the deployment of an SDN with it is actually allowing customers, partners to do comparative analysis. So when we've talked to carriers, for example, now they're much more comfortable being able to say, well, I'll build up one cloud with this SDN, I'll build up another cloud with another SDN, and do some actual comparative performance testing. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit uh, you know, the PlumGrid interface and how you tr 
differentiated, differentiated Plum Grid from what you think you do well and what you mm -hmm. think uh, the customers in, like about it. Yes. As you can see in the charm here, you have multiple components. These three blue components plus the purple one are the Plum Grid elements. And we have what we call the director cluster, which would be the controller environment. But we have something interesting that call uh, the Plum Grid Edge. This is a piece of software that we deploy in each hypervisor that allows us to give things beyond the traditional OBS and the standard SDN solutions. The idea here is that Plum Grid provides an overlay-based technology, a software SDN uh, solution, that was focusing on isolation, security, and extended capabilities. So essentially, we plug into Neutron and all your networking needs for an open stack environment, from switching, routing, NAT, floating IPs, security groups, DNS, DHCP. Basically, we provide all these things as a solution. In order to do that, we needed a, a way to deploy the software in all the compute nodes uh, that would essentially simplify the deployment. This is where the charm uh, that we use. Once installation is done, uh, what happens is that you have uh, your open stack. Now you are in open stack land. In this case, we have already created, let's say, two networks and some instances and a router connected to it. So what we do is all the networking technology that happens within this open stack environment is provided by Plum Grid. And I'm just going to go uh, here to the user interface that we have to explain you a couple of contexts. Uh, the first thing we do is we focus in creating kind of a secure SDN solution for OpenStack. The reason is because when you have multi-tenant clouds, you don't want uh, one of your tenants to interfere with the other ones. You don't want to have traffic that crosses, and you have to have uh, proper isolation. So what we did is we introduced this concept of a virtual domain. A virtual domain is kind of a sandbox from a networking point of view that all the VMs, all the compute elements that you connect to that network are going to be based on their identities connected to this virtual domain. And in there, as you can see, basically we have uh, the switch that, or the network that was created by OpenStack with the address management, the DHCP, the router that was created by OpenStack, and the other switch with a, a set of virtual machines that were jump-started. In this case, you have uh, here the, the rules to onboard the VMs. So that's kind of overall what we do. Basically, we provide a solution from a security point of view, scalability, high availability for OpenStack. The other thing that was uh, very interesting working with Canonical, going back to the Juju uh, charm thing, was that what you can see here is this was to deploy OpenStack, deploy OpenStack and Plum Grid. But then on top of that, you use exactly the same mechanism to deploy applications on top of OpenStack. You may have a Spark application. You may have a, a web, a three-tier web application. And load balancer. A load balancer. So what we started discussing with Canonical was how does the network play a role within these deployments? And the idea is that now we are in this demo specifically focusing on OpenStack. I mean, all the things that you could deploy in this environment would be on top of OpenStack. But uh, the charms and the bundles that are being created could map to different structures too. Right. A few slides ago, we were showing, uh, Mark was showing this uh, slide that you could see Amazon, OpenStack, Google. And the idea is when you create applications and have to burst across clouds, how do you do that? And this is where we are, going, uh, we are doing some interesting work uh, jointly with Canonical, where how do we hide uh, the network complexities of these little uh, uh, green uh, arrows, basically the connectors that connect applications, when you go to a... <laughs> Here, I got it. Go ahead. <laughs> to a, right, a charm that essentially is trying to deploy an application. And how do you make that the network is not in your way? That you focus on your application, you have your bundles and, and your application bundles, and when you deploy them, automatically the network underneath has to provide the proper connectivity with the security and isolation properties that your application may need. So we are doing some interesting work on those directions. Right, so what I think is important here is that we've set the stage to simplify the deployment of OpenStack, then the bundle with the, the uh, SDN, and then ultimately, as Paris said, trying to ultimately expand the network and treat the network as just a pool of network nodes. Um, if I may, John, I can show you the, uh, the network topology, and Pear just touched on this. Uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, many of you see this before, this is of course Horizon, and the network topology in, uh, being shown in Horizon. Um, these are a number of workloads that are running in, uh, in our cloud. The Plum Grid is of course providing the network. In this case, you can see actually it's a, it's a number of containers. So these are LXD, LXD containers that are running, and Plum Grid is providing the networking interfaces for those. So it's supporting container-based workloads running in an OpenStack environment. Oh, thanks, Mark. And then 
That was a surprise to me too. Very yes. Nice. <laughs> Well-oiled machine. Yeah. So um, it's, it's good when some bits of the demo work, right? Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, there's a couple things that we're enabling here that, that's very important. One is we're, we're bringing this simplification and scale. And two, th thanks, Pierre. And two, we're enabling through automation the sort of level of scale that you see in other industries. So when we talk to telecom providers, they live in a world where one system admin manages hundreds of machines. When you go into the Google Airbnb side of the house, they're able to manage tens of thousands of machines with an individual, all through automation. So when you look at AWS, they were able to open a data center in Singapore, for, for example, with thousands of machines with three individuals, right? So that's the, kind of, that's the scale that we're trying to bring to the enterprise and to the telecom market. Let's see. Uh, so one thing that we've also done, and we were thrilled to see this uh, OpenStack Summit, is the most recent results of the user survey. And this slide shows a little bit of the data. What we're, we're really excited to see is that of the major clouds in, in, in OpenStack, 1,000 users or more, the survey showed that we had 65% of all those clouds. And overall, across all clouds, we had 51%. But the exciting thing for us is that we also grew 10% over the last half. So from our perspective, we see us having majority market share and on top of that, growing faster than any other part of the other options out there. Sure. So that's a combination of all of the above. And if John probably jumps onto slide 10, sorry, not knowing where you're going. Yeah. Um, the, um, the, this gives, so we operate in many different areas across the OpenStack sphere. So everything from just being the operating system underneath to people using Ubuntu OpenStack, our packages, to people using Canonical OpenStack, which is our packages that are driven using our reference architecture and tooling, GGMAS, et cetera, um, and on autopilot. And then the final option you'll see on here, the Bootstack, so where we are delivering a fully managed on-premise service. So it's all of those things. Some of them will say just be the OS, others will be people like Bitile or uh, my media and Peer one that are, have got a, a fully managed service implementation. And what, what we've seen you know, with some of our customers and some of our mutual customers, um, they start on one part of the equation and they, they go up. So uh, where we've been in case it's just the operating system, we have a dialogue with them where they're starting to look at how to automate and simplify what they're doing or how to leverage what we're doing in the SDN space to simplify the deployment of OpenStack with the SDN. Now, we are bouncing around a little bit, but it's the end of the day, so I decided to do that. Um, so let me just spend a second here on what we are putting in place around OpenStack and SDN. You saw how we're trying to simplify the deployment and the work we've done with Plum Grid and the excellent work they did on not only creating the charm, and the, but the bundle itself. We've created a set of partnerships across all the major SDNs in the marketplace. Juniper, Plum Grid, Cisco come to mind. They're in the process of creating charms. A number of these charms are already created. What that allows us to do is not only supply choice in terms of people mapping the SDN that's right for them against an OpenStack that's configured correctly for them, but we also allow them to have choice on the hardware, on the server, on the storage side, hypervisor. Then on top of that, what we do is choice by itself isn't any good if you don't have any confidence in it. So we use our OpenStack Interoperability Lab to do thousands of tests a month to make sure that we mix the configurations of the cloud and map it to different applications, BMSDNs or VNFs, and make sure that it doesn't break. Just to give you a sense of the magnitude, we have 73 hardware combinations, which result in over 175 cloud combinations, as I said, thousands per month, 46,000 deployments, and ultimately we have many, many functional tests. The end result of that is having a degree of confidence that when we have somebody deploy the bundle, as you saw with the Plum Grid charm, it'll actually work. So, we're getting very close to the end. 
Um, and I appreciate everybody taking time and staying with us. A at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is make OpenStack easy. OpenStack itself, the management of it, the deployment of it, and ultimately deploying it with SDNs and other applications. We recognize that automation itself is not enough. You want to be able to create this, automate it, reuse it, share it. You know, and as Pear pointed out, you actually can put it out in the marketplace, so to speak, and let other people use it. Um, I think that's good for OpenStack in general, the foundation, and all of us that are trying to drive adoption. Lastly, choice and simplification go hand in hand for us. If you give people choice and they don't have the confidence that it'll actually work, that when they take a particular hardware device or a particular server, a particular storage, deploy it in the cloud and add a particular SDN, and they don't have confidence that will all hang together, we're creating some of the, the problems that some people have had over the last couple of years with all the difficulty of deploying OpenStack. And what we're very confident is with Juju and the autopilot, we're taking that complexity out and people are able to deploy clouds quite simply. With that, I think I'll take a pause. T take the center stage and I'll check on uh, oh, how why we... our cloud deployment's going. So, uh, see how far we've got. Ah. Well, 30%. Those of you who wish to stay till 7 o'clock can see it's it completely. Uh, d does anybody have any questions? Yeah, in pair, please come up and join us for any mm -hmm. questions. Um, and, yeah, please. Yes, so the question was, are these charms available? Um, if you go to the Juju charms, as Mark is feverishly typing, you can actually go to this website and you'll be able to pull up the charms and the bundle itself. So it's not just the individual charms that are available, but as we said, the work that Plum Grid did, for example, in creating a bundle with their charm is available for people to use. Not only to use, but make their own version and modify it for their needs. And one of the things we're trying to do to simplify OpenStack is give, you know, in essence, a starting point where you can build on the success and experience of others and not treat everything as a clean sheet of paper ex exercise. So this is the goal of Charms really is that um, we are crowdsourcing knowledge and best practice from as wide a field as possible. So uh, we've developed the Charms for Plumgrid, for example, in conjunction, Plumgrid actually took the lead because they know their application better than anybody. Um, but over time, as we get feedback from users that deploying, we will see, um, we want to get input into those, right? How best to, to be able to do these things. And so, uh, John, lead the demo now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there are many charms. There's about 130 or so charms uh, in, in the store that have been verified and validated, publicly available. Of course, we have many customers that will then create their own branch, and we encourage them uh, to then, if there's things that are more broadly applicable, to push those, as we call, back upstream into the charm and make them available for everybody else. Yes, sir. Uh, can you make a cloud with two RabbitMQs? Uh, we make clouds with multiple RabbitMQs. So, uh, and we typically use mirrored queues in them. Mirrored? Yeah. Not clusters? No, mirrored queues generally. I mean, we have customers that do it in multiple different ways. Our best practice architecture and as part of the autopilot when we deploy it will be deploy typically three rabbits with um, mirrored queues. Well, my question is about the clustering, mm -hmm. uh, not mirroring. Okay. Uh, yes. What, 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 what would be the advantage of clustering versus mirrored? When you have more than 200 nodes, RabbitMQ goes down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Ye
if you want to dig into that a little more, then um, we can certainly connect you with one of the architects that will be able to help sort of shape. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Any questions for Pear? This is very slow. It's late. It, yeah, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the Wi-Fi is a bit slow because we're yeah. going through the VPN in Boston. Yep. So <laughs> this is the canvas of uh, the Charm Store. It's uh, jujucharms.com. So to your question, are they available? Yes. All you have to do is go and you can see them yourselves, sort them by Plum Grid, OpenStack, Juniper, OpenStack, et cetera. And, You'll see the bundles as well as the individual charms. I think we've all had a long <laughs> enough day. So thank you very much for taking time. We'll stay around for some questions and greatly appreciate the guys that stay to the bitter end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are some feedback forms. If you want to fill out a feedback form, uh, then you can either leave it on your seat or pass it to somebody on the way out. You can win some uh, Buntu swag. Thank you. Thank you, Pat.